your whole group Can't get in the back round You step the march on, yo, you get stamped out Smash the light bulbs off, get your hands down You say that gangsters, but where's your mans now? I see your whole group shaking in the back round You step the march on, yo, you get stamped out Smash the light bulbs off, get your hands down For the past six weeks, the building behind me has been completely empty as b-boys around the world have battled it out for the right to be here at the Sony Ericsson UK B-Boy Championship World Finals. It's happening tonight. It's going to be intense. It's going to be immense. And quite frankly, I want to stop talking about it to you and I want to get in there and see the action. And I know you do too. So come on, join me. Every year, Brixton Academy is transformed into the spiritual home of British breaking as it opens its doors to 5,000 hip hop fans for the Sony Ericsson UK B Boy Championships World Finals. This year, the championship celebrates its 15th anniversary, and we've been on a global qualifying tour with its founder, Hooch. This is it, it's all been coming to this point. How does it feel? I'm excited now, really excited. You might not know anything about breaking, okay? But when you see it, you are gonna be converted. What makes today special is the lineup. And the lineup is always the key to the B-Boy Championships because it's that talent that makes it. Who just hand-plucked only the best B-Boys from qualifying events held in New York, Tokyo, Helsinki, Le Mans, Eindhoven and Heerlen. What does it mean to be here at the 15th anniversary of the UK B-Boy Championships World Finals? This is the I've never been to London before. UK is the best championship in Europe, in the whole world too. A lot of our work, our aspiration goes towards this event. Nobody got a free ride here. I think everybody can win. Now, here in London, the world champions will be crowned. And I'll be joined by Phil Young, a man who's more than at home on the Brixton stage. He's been around the world on the international qualifying tour and has the inside scoop on all of the best crews. So here I am, side of stage, with Mr. Phil Young, a veteran in the game. Oh, thank you very much. Is B-boy culture still as strong around the world as it ever was? Is it getting stronger? Is it getting bigger? Now, we, we were in Ukraine. I met Siberian B-boys who had travelled four days by bus to get there. Wow. Yes, it's big. It is really, really big. And just to show you how big it really is, we're going to now take you on a little tour of some of the weird and wonderful people that we have met along the way to get here to Brixton Academy tonight for the World Finals. This year, the qualifying series for the World Finals has seen some of the fiercest battles in its history. But our travels haven't confined us to the cipher. We've witnessed how different countries and characters celebrate hip-hop in their own unique way. Here we are. My name is Destroy. You are in New York City. Fat Beats is one of the most phenomenal stores, not only for the business and records and music, for the culture. Right now, little kids trying to join the hip hop. The parents send the kids learning a piano and also hip hop dancing. It's spread, it's a normal thing right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Yanni Tolin from Helsinki, Finland. Back in the days, people were painting with car paints because that's all there was. Now there's an entire business and industry for graffiti art. I've been involved with IBE for three years now, and what's unique about this event is that there are multiple events under one umbrella. The thing about hip hop is people know. You can deny till you die, but people know if you won. You got to take it when you As you can see, there are some weird and wonderful creatures in the global b-boy world encompassing the four elements of hip-hop. Now, Phil, professor of hip-hop and all things, what are those four elements? Well, we've got DJ, we've got MC, we've got the feature, and of course we've got breaking B-boys and B-girls. And now you've got the foundation, let's talk about the crews. We have got eight of the finest crews in the world on stage tonight. Here's a little bit of a rundown. Top 
top nine crew from St. Petersburg in Russia. They mean business. They are part of the superstar B-boy elite. Don't rule them out for the spot in the final. The extraordinary gentleman, one of the few crews that are coming up through the ranks in Holland at the moment. They've got a totally different take on breaking. You won't believe it, the crowds are either going to love them, hate them, or be slightly confused. From New York, we've got dynamic rockers. These guys, they're not scared to show that they can do the flips and the power moves. They've got foundational moves, yes, but they've also got the showmanship that only New York City can bring. Let's see how they fare. Coming out of Brazil, we've got the Amazon crew. Not much we know about these guys. They're gonna be influenced by capoeira. So they're gonna have a lot of flips, a lot of power moves. They're gonna be very, very flexible. Are they gonna make it to the finals? Either way, they're gonna make their mark on Brixton. From Japan, we've got Foundation Crew. Now, they made it through to Brixton two years ago. They've got some experience. One thing, and it's true about a lot of Japanese crews, is that they show too much respect. You've got to show that you're the crew, that you're gonna win. If they can pull it all together, these guys might well be in with a chance, you know. Out of Paris, the Vagabond crew. These guys all grew up with each other. It's stronger than the crew. It's almost blood, you know. If they come up against someone like Found Nation, that's gonna be interesting because it's an absolute clash of cultures. And representing the UK, based here in London town, we've got the Soul Mavericks here. Now they've made it through to Brixton a number of times. If they get the crowd behind them, if they can make all their routines count. I tell you what, Soul Mavericks will come with some dynamite. The mighty Zulu Kings, they are the world's greatest b-boys. Hand-picked breakers from around the world. Names like Menno from Holland. We've got Mouse, originally from the Philippines. They don't meet that often. So are they gonna work as a crew? to my friend Phil here for a scholarly guide to all the crews. Thank you very much, Neil, but it's all very easy when it's on paper, when you're talking about it. But forget about that, when you're in the heat of battle, it's an all-out warfare and absolutely anything can happen. Well, let's find out now what the crews think of their own chances in their own words. Well, confident or do you think they're slightly shook? I'm here with uh, representing the US of A, Dynamic Rockers. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon crew. Yes. Foundation. Yeah. We are all from different country, but we live all in France. So the French culture is a big bordel. It's like, uh, you know, rah! We win, you know what I'm saying? Let's just say we're not going to be ourselves that night. <laughs> if you win, you're going to eat a fruit? That's the least rock and roll oh, answer no, no, anyone no, has given. This, you know? We're going to do all <laughs> We're going to eat a fruit. Okay. You guys don't pronounce your T's, right? Like, Harry Potter. <laughs> Watch out for that guy right there, man. Touching. No, Body, that's the... Body carnival. Smoke everybody. Just being overall confident, like, I know I'm about to smoke. It tends to intimidate the other opponent. We call that swag. Yeah. Swag! <laughs> you don't like routines. It's the same thing as choosing between a gun and a samurai sword. You know? We choose for the samurai sword. Now, if you win, who are you going to call first? 911. <laughs> Please help me, I'm so happy. It's not for the winning, it's for the girls. Chorus, there is no girls, there is no drink, there is no smoke, there is only battle, only war. Who will be the first person that you will find to say that you've won? I think I'm no. I'm going to say, I'm going to call to the army, I'm not coming. <laughs> Something in the middle has just like gone from the UK. Well, that's what we're trying to bring back up, you know. We're just trying to bring that original hip hop back into the UK, like show that, you know, there's still passion here for. Uh, we're at the B-Boy Championships 2010, 15th anniversary. I'm really not sure what to expect, but whatever it is, I'm sure it will grow my brain. <laughs> we love being here. Guess what we're going to see? <laughs> Don't stop. The UK B-Boy uh, is, a, is, a, is a beautiful battle, you know. And I'm all the way from South Africa, came to 
the UK champs, so I'm hoping it's everything that everybody's been telling me about. We thought Jinjo should have won last year, but um, yeah, it didn't turn out alright. I'm looking forward to seeing top nine, they're my favourites. Truthfully, right, just a good battle, just some good techniques and fly stuff. Break. Welcome back to the Sony Ericsson UK B-Boy Championship World Finals. I'm here with the amazing Phil Young. Thank you very much. Oh, you are Before amazing. the break, we hooked up with some of the crews. One of them guaranteed to make an impact here tonight in Brixton from Russia, top nine. What's up everybody, this is T.O.P. and I.N.E. crew from St. Petersburg representing Russia, the biggest country in the world. Style of top nine, it's a complete style, you know. We don't uh, fix uh, our mind on just one point, tricks or power, maybe acrobatic stuff or just uh, dance, shake your shoulders, no. We're trying to do everything. All the b-boys around the Russia, Ukraine and Belarus, they learn from all over the world, you know? They have part from USA breaking, part from Euro breaking, part from Korean breaking. Mix it, put to blender, drrr, bam! And you have Ukrainian, Russian and Belarusian style something new. All the top crews from USA, you know, they're still on the top because the people which start in USA, you know, they're dancing like 20, 30 years. For them, we're just kids, you know. They have people like crazy legs, old school b-boys, you know. It's very hard to come over the USA, you know, but we're working on it. James, thank you for making it happen. Who is one love? Dead man. Yes. Top nine, one of the toughest crews in the business. Do not underestimate them. I reckon they're going through to the finals. Well, the finals have now begun, certainly in a crew sense, because on the stage, Representing Brazil for the first time, Amazon crew versus the French crew, Vagabonds. Munir from Vagabonds crew gets the 2010 World Finals underway. They last competed here in Brixton in 2002 and lost in the finals. Now they're looking for revenge against the new guys from Brazil. This is the first crew competing here, so everybody in Brazil is expecting for to see the, all videos on the internet and everybody's crazy there. And now we have opportunity to show each of us dancing, you know, and battling. The battle, you change, you know, your face, your expression, you show yourself, you know, we can show our crew dancing, doing choreographies and show everything about it. Vagabonds don't hold back and answer the Brazilians with an all crew routine. We are not afraid about anybody. We came to, to, to have pleasure, to have fun, because Vagabond came in 2002, and I think they did a real, real good thing. Vagabond take a part of history of this event, so they lost in the final battle, so we came this year to win. We mixed a lot of capoeira moves, and flips, a lot of flips. We try to bring our own style and don't dance like the other other crews, other countries, you know. We try to bring to the scene the, our style, our own style. But after over-rotating a flip, the Brazilians crash hard, which clearly knocks their confidence. Vagabonds finish up with a solo round packed full of power. And now it's all over to the judges. France, France 
battle's on. Phil, we've just seen the first crew battle. The Amazon crew representing Brazil versus Vagabonds representing France. Some amazing moves in there. Some incredible, especially power moves in there. But overshadowed by one event. Now yeah, the guy landed on his head. Now the good news From is... From Amazon crew, yeah. Amazon crew. The good thing is, it's okay. It's okay. Shows the ghost crew that this is serious. It's dancing, yes, but it's very physical, very acrobatic, and people can get hurt. What have we got next? Next up, well, interesting one. We've got the mighty Zulu Kings up against the UK's finest, Soul Mavericks. UK stand up! It is a very much a David and Goliath moment. I'd like to think our boys are carrying a slingshot. Yeah. Hi. Over here we have Soul Mavericks. Welcome back. Mighty Zulu Kings. I'm not really worried about anyone, you know, just worried about ourselves. You just gotta go out there, feel the music, it don't even matter, you know, as long as you just put all your heart into it. B-Boy and Mouse, the 2006 Solo World Champion, puts the home favourites under early pressure. We're from London, man, we don't fear no one. We're gonna go and give everyone a run for their money, you know. We're gonna see each character from Soul Mavericks bring out something new, you know. We know how much it means to us, and like, we're gonna just work hard just to show people what we got. What Zulu Kings represent is the essence of B-Boy. You could say oh, they're a super crew, whatever, it don't matter. You gotta bring it hard every day. Every time you're in that, that dark circle, you know? It all comes down to who's really, you know, taking it to the floor and who's killing it. That's it, you know? But right now it's Roxy from the Soul Mavericks who's lapping up the roar of the crowd. We've got a lot of, you know, ammunition ready to shoot at them. You know, a lot of strategy, a lot of things we've been looking at, you know, because we're considered as one of the weaker crews, but we always bring the heat. The Soul Mavericks have never been past the first round at the World Finals, but looking at them battling now, that seems extremely hard to believe. Mighty Zulu Kings answer back with Busy Brooks from the USA, just one of their many international stars with a ton of battle experience under his belt. Maybe Zulu Kings weren't planning for this though, the Soul Mavericks' youngest member, 15-year-old b-boy prodigy Sonny. Not only can they throw him around for routines, but he's got power of his own as well. But will it be enough? UK moves on. Three to two. We've just witnessed a huge upset. Oh my gosh, mighty Zulu Kings against UK Soul Mavericks. David against Goliath. And David came out on top. Yeah, here's the thing. It's a crew battle. Zulu, um, Zulu Kings might have some of the world's greatest individuals. But when it came down to it, it was so Mavericks who were tighter. They're through to the next round on stage right now. We've got Dynamic Rockers against a Jordan gentleman from Holland. Dynamic Rockers waste no time with their first routine. Nobody from New York ever came to this competition and represented. So we're the first and we want to make an impact and we want to win. We're not underestimating anybody, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we're prepared for everybody and we want to battle with the best. You're unlikely to see any routines from the extraordinary gentlemen. These guys believe in all our individual strength and start off with an impressive spinning air chair. Well, when we battle, we don't even battle against the opponent, you know. Wow. I'm battling somebody from my crew who went before me. I just want to top him. It's just uh, the way that we approach this dance. It's just for ourselves. It's, it's, it comes from the inside. This here is our chance to show not just New York, the world, what Dynamic Rockers could bring. One thing Dynamic have always brought to their battles is incredible gymnastic ability, perfectly exemplified by this guy, B-Boy Gravity. Yet another solo round from EXG. This time, it's their secret weapon, the Japanese import Tachin, taking it to the Americans. A B 
big round to finish from EXG, but will it be enough to take them into the semi-finals? Viewers, one of the craziest battles we've seen tonight. I think it came down to, in the end, experience one over nerve. All right, let's move on now. Japan always represent foundation crew out of Japan versus... Ooh. The one and only top nine, and here's the thing now. Two years ago, when top nine won, they knocked out Crown Nation in the early round. Crown Nation are back, they want revenge. Eager to get it started, Reski steps out for top nine. All views unexpected for us. We have power, we practice, teamwork, we like. Everybody like one, power, style and creativity. Nine, nine person, nine characters, all together, top nine crew. Everybody like less battle in the, in the life. This is our strategy. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
If you see a b-boy from an opposing crew counting on his hands, that's a sign that you've done that move one too many times. Don't repeat your moves, you don't like uh, do the same thing every time. Oh, he did that twice. He did that three times. So when you see people going like this, that means you did that already, dog. I've seen it already. Next, biting. This is a big no-no. B-boying is all about originality and inventing your own style. When you bite, you're taking something from someone else and trying to claim it as your own. As you can see from this clip, accusations of biting are taken very seriously indeed. That means uh, like uh, lips of uh, big fish uh, who swim in the uh, ocean and eat all what he see. He just up, up, she eat, 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 bite everything. The crash. When you see people slapping the floor, it means they've witnessed a crash. A b-boy has failed to execute his move correctly, and it looks ugly. When somebody crashed, the opposite crew would try to show to the people and to judge it that that was crash, and we, we can do like, whoa. Oh, that was crash. Crash is something you want to avoid. Crash makes you look really bad. A crash tells the other person battling you, oh, I'm going to smoke this guy. So don't crash. And getting smoked. The b-boy has lit up the floor with his set and he's quite literally on fire. You put down your round, he's answered it. Rolled you up, thrown you away. Game over, he's done with you, jog on. When you smoke somebody, it's kind of like the worst humiliation. It's like you killed them, you murdered their round. It's like, boom, finished. Getting smoked and getting beat is two different things. You can get smoked really bad, and that just means that you didn't have no chance of winning. You didn't win no, no rounds. You just, it was just not your day today. With that in mind, it's time to take a look at some more action. Although the crowds gather for the main event on Sunday evening, the UK B-Boy Championships is an entire weekend packed full of hip-hop madness. Day one, Sony Ericsson B-Boy Championships, 15th anniversary. We just got in about 150 dancers. You've got 16 B-Boys, 16 poppers, so we do the first two rounds of battling, and then tomorrow will be the semi-finals and finals for that. And then we have the locking as well. Then next door in the IBE room, they're hosting uh, battles which you can enter on the day. The solo battles bring together one of the strongest B-Boy lineups in the world. Solo lineup is crazy. We've got Morris, the defending champion. We've got superstar Lilu. We've got Robin from Top Nine, Flying Buddha, also from Top Nine. We've got Billy Boy, incredible power mover from France, and we've got Kiddo. But when you put them together and you draw them and you just look at it, it's like, oh my God, this is going to be fire! B Boy Morris from Fallen Kings, uh, B Boy World Street Scientist. The solo battles at UK Champs is always crazy, especially the first day. You never know what to expect. You kind of have to have a hunger to win, but it's just more you have to play your cards right and, you know, just throw your, your best at every round that you can. Coming back as a champ is going to be difficult to defend, but at the same time, I'm more experienced than, like, 70% of the guys entering. They don't know what it's going to take to get there. Hopefully I can come out victorious. I've been training, but if I do lose this event, I do want to beat Lilu before that happens. <laughs> so... I will beat everybody. Nothing like confidence, Robin, and it seemed to be spreading through his crew because his top nine buddy, Flying Buddha, was also taking out the opposition. Flying Buddha! Lilu claimed victory against the promise in New York b-boy Frankie Perez from the Supreme Beings. One, two, three! Lilu moves on! Which just left defending champion Morris to take to the floor.
incredible battles. All the matchups worked. Real big upsets as well. Morris going out to Kiddo in the first round of the Solo B Boys. Looks like I gotta go back to the lab, yo. First round elimination. That's a no-no in my book. Kiddo was just straight fire. I mean, that kid's a star in the making. Although he hasn't made it through to the semi-finals, everybody will know his name. We came for a battle. Did you like that? That's what we're talking about. It was satisfying, you know, because I knew I was going to the next round. But despite beating Morris, Kiddo was knocked out in the quarterfinal by top nine's Flying Buddha. Oh, it's over, Buddha. Well, then I let myself down, but uh, that's a part of life, right? Now it's down to the semis, Robin versus Lilu in the first semi tomorrow. So tomorrow, I will try to do my best rounds in my life because I never battle Lilu. I think it will be hard because I, I have that what he don't have, and he have that what I don't have. Recognize my man Robin right here, official. This is my man right here, all the way. Trust me. Jesse, the knockout for the solo B-Boy battles, the final of which happened earlier on this evening. The finals just went on a little while ago. It was Lilu from France up against Brian Budu. I think it's from Ukraine. It was unreal. People doing things with their body, which, well, shouldn't be allowed. Really. Absolutely. Now it's semi-final time. This battle used to be played out in the English Channel amongst ships. Now it's France versus England. Vagabond versus Soul Mavericks is off the chain. Angry Abdul gets things started for the Soul Mavericks, showing off some old school power with air swipes and elbow air flares. Lee is answered by Little Kev, who fights back with some power of his own, combining windmills, head spins, and flares. But the Soul Mavericks aren't beaten yet. Out comes Roxy. and she's showing off some incredible strength and flexibility with that freeze. The French are pulling out all the stops, throwing another impressive routine at the UK. Finish up with a perfectly executed round. France, France, Bouza. Bill, the crowd pleasing nationalism of the UK crew, Soul Mavericks, was not enough to dismiss the clinical excellence of Vagabond, was it? Yeah, but hey, Soul Mavericks have stepped up their game. Absolutely. In the last couple of years, we've seen them progressively get better and better. They've made it to the semi finals. Don't knock that at all. That is that is good. That's serious business. Next year, don't worry about it. They're going to be in the final. So, Mavericks, I guarantee that. Next semi final, we have Tom Nine versus Dynamic Rockers. Russia versus America. This is as if the Cold War never happened. Rocky Three all over again. Check this out. Are you ready? It's the dynamic rockers from Queens, New York, who get things started, and they're leaving nothing to chance, coming out straight away with their first routine.
The top nine have bags of battle experience and they know exactly what they need to do to answer a big round. Trading one routine for another, they come straight back at the Americans, who look like they've got their strategy planned out on buzz cards. This time it's Blue Eyes setting off his crewmate Invertebrae for the Dynamic Rockers. Why is he called that? We'll just watch this round. This guy is seriously double jointed, which lends unbelievable flexibility to his game. This battle is going to go to the wire. Top nine will have to bring out something big if they want to get to their fourth final in consecutive years. The Russians end their round by unleashing B-Boy Costo. This guy makes no mistakes. Expect a super clean set from him. Two. Three. Top nine take it, four votes to one. We have got a final on our hands. Top nine from Russia up against Vagabond from France. They both look so strong. And Hooch, the man who runs all this, he called it very, very early it. on. Yeah, he called it very, very early on. It's going to be a battle to end all battles. The one for world supremacy at the Sony Ericsson UK B-Boy Championship World Finals. You know what? One guy who's busier than most here today is Hooch. The man who started this event 15 years ago. He's been jet setting all around the world. Just kind of finding out, discovering what b-boy talent exists out there in the globe. But we caught him to give you a hip-hop guide to London. London lad Hooch first started the UK B-Boy Championships in 1996. And despite travelling all over the world for the international qualifying series, he's a firm believer that there's no place like home. For me, it's the greatest city in the world anyway. We have great audiences. From the very start, from 96, the audience was crazy, you know? They were going mad about the moves, they were giving it up, they gave respect to everybody. My background is, is a club promoter and DJ. We approached the B-Boy Championships like that. It had to be a banging night, you know? It had to be somewhere where you'd want to go and party as well as enjoy yourself and what you see. Hooch's first stop off in London is to get the finest, most sought-after b-boy merchandise. We've got exclusive peep at some of the new merchandise for the 2010 b-boy championships world finals. This is the winner's cap, it's cashmere and gold, and this is the competitor's cap. Everyone who competes at the champs gets one of these. Everything about the b-boy championship has to be right. Merchandise is no exception. In terms of hip-hop, there are certain things you've got to be rocking your headwear, whether it's a cap or a hat or a beanie, whatever. You know, overall style has got to be fresh. B-Boy culture is still very much growing here in the UK and one addition that will no doubt fuel the dance was the opening of a much needed free practice spot. So one of the places that most people come to train down here in London is here in the Trocadero. They opened out the whole basement and said, look, B-Boys, you take it over, you run it, and every night it's open to about 11, 12 at night. I think free training spots are really, really important. Obviously, we've got that weather problem here in the UK, and um, the great thing about this is it's underground. Like we covered in Japan, where all the styles went under this like massive office block, this is our kind of version of it. So people can come down here, they can practice house, hip-hop, whatever they want, pop in, b -boy in. Soul Mavericks come down here, La Familia, B-Boy Spin. When I first came here, I saw people that I hadn't seen at other training spaces. I think it reaches out to a wider range of people that 
uh, are starting to break. Who can come and train with people or next to people that are, have already been breaking for a while. And they do events here, and because it's an event that happens where everyone trains, people that are just starting to break will enter the battles and get more experience in battling until they feel they can go up to the bigger jam. So it gets people started. You know, it actually helps people to, to get off on the right foot. This is where everyone from London trains, really. Tokodero, everyone knows where it is. You, you notice the improvement every time there's a training spot that's open for everybody to go to. So now we have this place, just hope it stays open for <laughs> ever. <laughs> With practice spots like Trocadero opening their doors, a new wave of British crews can't be far away. Future B-boys and B-girls who will no doubt be aiming to make it to the world finals in Brixton one day. The funny thing is, is that people say, oh, you know, do you think it would go 15 years and all of it? I never thought it wouldn't go 15 years, but really it comes down to what you see on stage, and that is all down to the talent of the B-boys, B-girls, poppers and lockers that, that compete every year. See that when you're riding around on the top of a tourist bus around London, do you? Thank you very much, Hooch. Now, 5,000 people behind me, all the people on the stage, and you watching have been waiting for this. Bill, it's the crew final. This is what we are here for. This is the money. This is the finals. This is top nine from Russia, up against the pretenders from France, vagabonds. My old mate Phil called it earlier on. The man in the nose said they would make it to the final and here they are out first. This is the fourth year in a row that these guys have been in this position. Winners in 2008 and runners up in 2007 and 2009. Now that is an impressive record. Top nine definitely know how to make an impact and send out this year's solo b-boy finalist Flying Buddha to take it to the French. Vagabonds were itching to get into the battle and come out with a five-man routine with perfectly timed flares and jackhammers. This final is already looking like it's going to be epic. And they're not done yet. Like Top 9, these guys also have a deep-rooted history in the competition. They mentioned earlier in the show that they're doing this for the last generation of Vagabond crew, who lost here in the final battle in 2002. from the French, but don't rule out top nine just yet. They've been here four years in a row for good reason. Vagabonds attack almost before the top nine round is over. That's how keen they are to get on the floor. Only were their two-man routines perfectly in time, but that is an incredibly accurate front somersault, landing on two feet and hardly moving an inch. Vagabond seem to have some sort of routine planned for every round, and it's certainly winning over the crowd. That's it, game over. 
but who will be the 2010 World Crew Champions? Give it up. You have seen two crews, two crews. Wow. But only one will be the new champion. Okay, everybody. Come on, people. It's no longer a secret. The winner, the winner of the Sony Ericsson UK B-Boy Championships. New champion for 2010. Tony Erickson UK B-Boy Championship, the World Finals, Vagabond Crew from France representing yeah. Paris. Guys, how are you feeling right now? We feel happy. We lost in uh, 2002 against Project Korea. And right now, with the new generation Vagabond, we won. So we are just happy. Hooch, 15th anniversary done. Yeah. How do you think it went? It was amazing. Today we had fireworks, dynamite, passion, adrenaline, everything. If you haven't seen it live, make sure you book your tickets for next year because you've got to experience it. Hooch, mate, smashed it again. We've been all over the world from the Bronx to Brixton and finally the 2010 world champions have been crowned. Vagabonds from France were victorious, but it'll all be happening again next year and we'll see you there.